tensions really started to boil over when um, there were tens of thousands of Muslims who wanted to go on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And, uh, and, and Israel limited it to a safe amount that they let all the Muslims go to worship and, and to have their freedom, of course. But once it started to get too crowded, started limiting it. And we don't know if it was planned beforehand or in response. A lot of people say it was, um, uh, a lot of people say it was planned beforehand that on the Temple Mount, they had huge rocks and all the, the Muslim extremists on the Temple Mount had huge rocks that they started throwing at the Israeli police and started attacking the Israeli police. And then they would run into the Al-Aqsa Mosque. They would run into the Temple Mount. Now, after the Israeli police were attacked by so many people in such a violent way and then ran into the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the terrorists, the Israeli police went into the Al-Aqsa Mosque in order to arrest the terrorists. Hello, my friends from here in Israel. Um, the situation here is very difficult and I wanted to give you a little bit of an update on what's happening in Israel, how this started, what's happening right now, and what the fellowship's response is. So I'm going to uh, tell you from the beginning that at any moment I might have to run to a bomb shelter, if the code red siren sounds. Um, and so if I just disconnect at any point um, I'll try to bring you with me but it means that um, me and my family are running to shelters as well so this is um, right now in the past hour there have been hundreds of rockets launched at Tel Aviv and even north of Tel Aviv places like Renana, Herzliya now this might sound to you like there's been so many rockets going on but for some reason um, we've kind of gotten used to having rockets launched at places like Sterot and even Ashkelon which are in southern Israel on the border with the Hamas ruled terror uh, organization in the Gaza Strip um, but I don't remember ever I don't think there's ever been this many rockets launched at central Israel which are metropolitan international cities where all of the countries have their embassy and that is kind of a, a red a red line of once you strike there that's really war um, and so there's a feeling now in Israel Israel has had a lot of different conflicts where we've had thousands even of rockets sometimes launched at southern Israel cities but Hamas and the terrorists have not um, have not achieved or had the have the courage or had the horror or had the um, pure evil to launch so many rockets. Right now we're having hundreds of rockets launched at central Israel. It's I think the second time maybe in history that the um, Ben Gurion airport is closed down. Right now there's no air control, air traffic in Israel. All uh, airplanes have been redirected to Cyprus because the um, airspace over Ben Gurion Airport um, is is 
is so dangerous. I'm getting text messages from all of our staff and my friends in Tel Aviv and Central Israel that are all saying it's not stopping. There are just hundreds of rockets flying over Tel Aviv and, and Central Israel, um, the center of Israel. So, um, so, so Ben Gurion is closed for takeoff and landing, and there are new updates as literally as we're speaking because as we're speaking, there are hundreds of rockets flying over Tel Aviv and Israel. Um, we know that there are casualties. We know that there was a bus that was hit in the suburb of Tel Aviv. We think that um, we think that that everyone was evacuated from the bus, but we know that people were wounded from shrapnel, and there might still be people on the bus. There were several direct hit direct hits across central Israel. Um, and, and right now, almost half of the country of Israel is in their bomb shelters with rockets flying overhead, with the rest of Israel really on standby, staying close to bomb shelters. My children right now are watching a movie in the bomb shelter, and, I am, uh, and, and I'm here with you where I actually have, um, where I actually have service. Just I wanted to update you on what's happening. Now, we are in the final days of the Muslim uh, holy month of Ramadan. It's where they fast all day and then eat what's called the iftar meal at night. And so this is a whole month of the Muslim world fasting. And very often, um, there's a lot of violence during this month of Ramadan, even though it's meant to be a time of purity and peacefulness and prayer. When people are fasting all day, especially in the Middle East sun, it makes them very upset and angry. And tensions really started to boil over when um, there were tens of thousands of Muslims who wanted to go on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And, uh, and, and Israel limited it to a safe amount that they let all the Muslims go to worship and, and to have their freedom, of course. But once it started to get too crowded, started limiting it. And we don't know if it was planned beforehand or in response. A lot of people say it was, um, uh, a lot of people say it was planned beforehand that on the Temple Mount they had huge rocks and all the, the Muslim extremists on the Temple Mount had huge rocks that they started throwing at the Israeli police and started attacking the Israeli police. And then they would run into the Al-Aqsa Mosque. They would run into the Temple Mount. Now, after the Israeli police were attacked by so many people in such a violent way and then ran into the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the terrorists, the Israeli police went into the Al-Aqsa Mosque in order to arrest the terrorist. Now, what happened was all the terrorist leaders of the world, from Iran to Hamas and Gaza Strip, said, oh my gosh, the Israeli police are going into the Al-Aqsa Mosque and desecrating it. Now, if something's holy to people, they don't usually throw rocks from there and firecrackers at people and do all the violence from there and destroy it. Um, but it, it was no longer holy to these people. It was a hiding place for terrorists. But once the Israelis, start, the police, went in to arrest these terrorists, that's when everything kind of got out of control. There were tons of protests across Jerusalem that the Israeli police should not go into the mosque and, and, and lots of different protests against this while the Israeli police were still being attacked. Now, Hamas and the PA, the Palestinian Authority, and the Islamic Jihad, all the different kind of ruling parties for the, um, for, for the Muslims and the Palestinians here in, in this area, um, they were going to have elections, and elections were called off. And this now is Hamas's way to get, gain popularity amongst the extremists by, by Hamas launching rockets at Jerusalem, at Tel Aviv, suddenly puts them on the map. What does that mean? That suddenly all the extremists are standing with Hamas. If they're launching rockets, it means that they're taking a stand against evil Israel. Hamas has launched th over a thousand rockets in the past day at Israeli civilian cities, while Israel is responding by targeting terrorists. They're targeting those people who are launching rockets. They're called rocket cells. That rocket launching cells, Israel goes and, and, and target kills people right before they're about to launch rockets. They also target killed um, three of the commanders of the rocket cell. And so what that means is instead of just randomly bombing the Gaza Strip, Israel's going, finding the terrorists, terrorists and specifically taking the terrorists out. 
Now, where is this going to go? Nobody knows. There has never been a time where so many rockets have rained down on central Israel and Tel Aviv. As you know, Israel also doesn't have a stable government right now. We're in the middle of um, uh, uh, in the middle of the second attempt at a formation at a go of a government. But in the meanwhile, Bibi Netanyahu and Gantz are both in power, both as um, prime minister and defense minister. And it seems like they're working together to make sure priority uh, that Israel is um, that Israel is is safe from the rocket attacks and that Hamas terrorists are taken care of in whatever way they decide. Right now, I still wouldn't call this that we're at war, we're in conflict, um, and I pray at any moment a ceasefire could happen, but the more rockets that are launched at Tel Aviv and Central Israel, the more unlikely a ceasefire is. And so right now, the feeling in Israel is we are about to go to war, and what war means is ground troops, and what war means is weeks of rockets on Israel. Um, I think one of the biggest fears is that um, Hezbollah in uh, up north will will get um, will get uh, involved in this, and that Hezbollah in Lebanon in northern Israel has even more advanced rockets, and some even say hundreds of thousands of them to reach every single place in Israel and direct uh, direct missiles. Hamas, we don't believe they have uh, missiles that they could direct. They have long range missiles, but not missiles that they could direct. Hezbollah, on the other hand, in Lebanon, and both Hezbollah and Hamas are both being controlled by Iran, and Hezbollah in Lebanon does have direct um, missiles where they could, they could launch them to anywhere. Now, what's the fellowship's response? First of all, um, the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews is one of the largest sponsors of security in Israel, that we've built over 5,500 bomb shelters and every single one of them are open right now. And there are people in every single one of them. And what that means is that there are tens of thousands of Israelis sitting in bomb shelters and looking at the sign that says, donated with love by Christians around the world. And just that alone is so encouraging as we have so many people against us and, and saying that Israel is bad and can't defend herself. Suddenly, all these Israelis know Christians around the world stand with them. So tomorrow, we're actually placing 20 more bomb shelters. The main hospital down south is called Barzilai Hospital, and they've had three rockets already hit their property. And all of the injured are being evacuated to Barzilai. So we're working with Barzilai to place bomb shelters in the parking lot all over the places that are most vulnerable. We're going to the bomb shelters and bringing everything that the people need, food, water, medicine. We're working with the local municipalities to identify what those needs are, um, whether it's diapers for babies or formula or whatever it is in those public shelters. Also, for all the people who have, whose homes have been hit, there's a lot of bureaucracy in order to get aid, somewhere to sleep, basic needs for the day. And so the fellowship is going to the homes of all the people whose, whose uh, homes have been hit by rockets. And we're making sure that they have a place to sleep tonight, that they have their basic needs taken care of. Um, and of course, we have trauma centers. See, one of the problems is that people in Israel, a lot of people are suffering from trauma. On one, um, on, on one side, there's uh, people who are physically injured and they're being evacuated to the hospital. And on the other hand, there's so many people who are being, um, who, are, who are in shock. And so in order not to overwhelm the hospitals with the hundreds of people who need to be treated for shock, the fellowship has sponsored trauma centers in each of the cities that many of them are protected from rockets as well. So people who are in shock could go and be treated in these trauma centers and not need to overwhelm the hospitals and medical teams. And so um, for now, I'm gonna end this. I'm gonna go and take care of my children and my family and make sure everyone's uh, safe and, and get ready for whatever the night holds. Um, but I'll continue to update you, continue to check in, continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Um, I already see that we have so many trolls here already trying to spread uh, fake news all over. What we know is the old saying that has been true for over 70 years since Israel establishment. If, Israel, if Israel's enemies would put down their arms, there would be peace. 
if Israel would put down our arms, there would be no more Israel. And so just wanted you to remember that no matter what you see all over the world on the media, Israel wants peace. Israel wants security. Israel isn't just bombing the Gaza Strip and killing random people. Israel is targeting terrorists and so that the rocket attacks on Israel stops. So many children in the Gaza Strip have already been um, killed because they were part of the rocket crews. Their parents are sending them to launch rockets at Israel so that when Israel targets the people who are launching rockets, Hamas could say, oh, Israel killed children. And so um, I just want you to keep Israel in your prayers. I'm getting messages as we speak that there are tanks heading down to Gaza. Tanks are a sign of a ground incursion and the ground incursion is a sign of war. And so war, war is not good for every, anyone. War is something we try to avoid at all costs. Israel has lived side by side with Hamas ruled uh, uh, because we don't want war. But we will protect the people of Israel. We will not allow anyone to have Israel under fire, to be targeting civilians, to be killing civilians. Israel can't allow that. So join me in prayer. The guardian of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Hine lo yanum velo yishan shomer Israel. And thank you, each one of you, for being our voice on the ground. Let the world know what's happening in Israel. Let the world know the truth. Counter all the lies with truth and just spread us, spread us uh, under your wings, Lord, and protect us from anything that may come. Let us only know peace. Odiavo shalom aleichem. May we know the day of peace.